A gas is a large number of atoms or molecules that occupy the same region and are not bonded to each other. Since each particle in the gas has its own position and velocity, it is not reasonable to keep track of each particle individually. Instead, when we study gases, we look at volume, pressure, and temperature as average properties that describe the gas as a whole. The volume of the gas is the amount of space that all the particles take up, usually bounded by a box. The pressure of the gas is the strength and frequency of the collisions between the particles and the walls of the box. And the temperature of the gas is the average kinetic energy of all the particles in the gas. When we created a gas in our simulation, we gave each particle a random speed between zero and a maximum value. But what happens when you have two gases, say a red gas and a blue gas, and the two gases interact? You can think of each gas as having its own volume, pressure, and temperature based on the red particles and the blue particles separately. Let's suppose that the two gases start on separate sides of the box and that the red gas starts at a higher temperature than the blue gas. That means we would give the red and blue particles random speeds like before, but the red particles start out faster on average than the blue. When the gases mix, the particles will begin to collide and exchange energy so that the red gas will lower in temperature and the blue gas will rise in temperature. Here is the same code we used in the previous episode, but this time we're creating two lists of particles. The blue gas will start on the left side of the box and the red gas will start on the right side of the box. The particles in the blue gas will start out with a maximum speed of 0.1 while the particles in the red gas will start out with a maximum speed of 1. That means that the temperature in the red gas is 100 times higher than the temperature in the blue gas, since temperature depends on the square of the speed. That's like the difference between the boiling point of water and just a few degrees above absolute zero. After moving the particles and checking for collisions just like before, we calculate the pressure and temperature of each gas separately for comparison. When we run the code, we can see that the particles of the red gas, as expected, move around much more quickly than the particles of the blue gas. However, it does not take long for the red particles to collide with the blue particles and transfer kinetic energy to the blue particles. We call this transfer of kinetic energy heat. We can see the impact of heat in the graph of the temperatures of the gases. The blue gas shows a temperature increase while the red gas shows a temperature decrease. Eventually, the two gases settle out around the same temperature. We call this state thermal equilibrium. Similarly, the pressures of the two gases eventually even out. When the two gases reach the same temperature and same pressure, they're effectively behaving like a single gas. The details of this behavior will change if you adjust the initial speed and mass of the particles at the beginning of the code, but the two gases will always reach thermal equilibrium. You have now learned how to model the interaction between two gases using vPython to observe heat and thermal equilibrium. Follow the link in the description below to find a set of activities to help you learn more about this process. That means the temperature in the red gas is 100 times higher than the temperature in the blue gas. No way, that's not true. Oh, no, that is right, because the, the temperature is a difference of 100, because the speed has to get squared. Excuse me. That's like the difference between the boiling point of water and just a few degrees above absolute zero. That's wild.